Hello my dear students, welcome to the video. This video is going to be about a dramatist who single-handedly brought about a revolution in the way drama was perceived and written throughout the world. Yes, we are going to be talking about Henrik Ibsen, the Norwegian playwright who was not just a playwright but also a poet and a theatre manager. This video has been divided into two parts. So in the first part of my video, I'll be talking about Henrik Ibsen. And in the second part of the video, I'll be talking about modern drama. So Henrik Ibsen was a Norwegian. He was born in the year 1828 in the city of Skien in Norway. And he belonged to a very well-to-do family. But when he was eight years old, his father went bankrupt and they had to shift to a lesser fancy house in the neighborhood. When he was 15 years of age, he shifted to the city of Grimstad uh, and he became an apprentice to an apothecary. So he wanted, uh, I mean, he planned to be a pharmacist and he became an apprentice to a chemist or an apothecary. But while he was studying to be a pharmacist, he developed a great interest in poetry and theology. He studied these subjects a lot and he got interested in the Latin writers also. He studied Cicero and he was greatly influenced by these Latin writers. So he, uh, I mean, from Grimstad, he moved to the city of Christiania. Now, Christiania is the city which is today known by the name of Oslo, which is the capital city of Norway. So he moved to Christiania because he wanted to uh, go to the university as a student. And he got himself enrolled in uh, in something called uh, a student's factory. Now these student factories, they, they, they used to be typical institutions. Uh, uh, the way we have coaching centers in present day world, which prepare you uh, for admission uh, into better institutions. So he enrolled himself uh, into a student's factory and he prepared for the university. But unfortunately, he could not uh, clear the entrance exams of the universities and he did not get any admission uh, in uh, any of the universities. So he dropped that idea and then he moved on to pursue his uh, dream of becoming a writer. So he, uh, uh, he started uh, writing his first play and his first play came out when he was uh, in the year 1850. The play was called Catalin. Now this play was never staged and it was not a very successful play. I mean this play uh, with readers also it did not become very popular. And uh, the second play that he wrote was called The Burial Mound. This was the first play that was staged. That I mean written by uh, Ibsen, the play that was staged. This was the first play. And again it was a commercial disaster. But Ibsen very desperately wanted to be a writer and he kept on writing. Now he uh, was uh, invited by Old Bull to become the manager of the Burgeon Theatre. Now this was a time of uh, nationalistic awakening in Norway uh, because Norway had uh, got its, itself freed from the Dutch uh, influence from the Dutch in uh, rule after 400 years of uh, Dutch rule. So uh, there was a, this nationalistic awakening and Bergen theatre was a theatre which uh, the, the aim of this theatre was to uh, revive the glorious past of the uh, Nor of the Nor uh, Norway theatrical traditions. So Ibsen was appointed as a manager there and his job was to look after the staging of plays. So as a manager of this theatre, he was responsible for the staging of more than 150 plays. And uh, with this, he was allowed to produce one original play uh, per year. I mean, he was allowed to have a staging of one of his plays uh, once a year. So it gave him a platform that he was looking for. It gave him a platform for the staging of his plays. But unfortunately, all the plays that he wrote during this time, they were uh, commercial failures. They, they, uh, commercial failures and they, they were not very popular with the writers, readers as well. So uh, Ibsen was looking for financial stability. He, his financial condition was not very stable and he was granted uh, a very very small amount of uh, uh, travel grant by the uh, government of Norway and he used that grant and he shifted to Italy. Sorrento in Italy is the place where he went and 
he remained in self imposed exile for the next 27 years so in the year 1864 he shifted to italy and this was i mean this was the beginning of Uh, commercial success for himself as a writer so 1865 his famous play brand came out 1867 peer gint came out and peer gint was the play for which he received a decoration from the king of norway so it was i mean after 1864 he established himself as a dramatist as a theater writer and he went on writing but after he shifted to italy his life was more or less stable i mean he was uh, financially stable and he was writing uh, one play every two years so his life after this uh, point of point in time his life is more or less uneventful and he devoted himself completely to the to the task of writing dramas now Ibsen as a dramatist we can divide his whole dramatic career into four uh, periods and the first period is uh, the period of his uh, uh, f- dramatic failures i mean the period the initial period uh, when he wrote dramas and those dramas were not very successful so he wrote catalin then he wrote the the burial mound then saint john's eve and some other plays which are not read today which are not performed today and nobody is really interested in reading those plays because ibsen's reputation as a dramatist rests on other plays now the second phase of his uh, career as a dramatist it uh, it is of the those epic plays epic dramas that he wrote so it is the phase of uh, late 1860s and early 1870s when he wrote peer gint and brand these were two poetic drama that he wrote and after wrote and after peer uh, gint he did not write any poetic drama so this is the phase where he wrote dramas which were people with a lot of characters and there was so much of action taking place in those plays and then the third period Uh, of his writing is the period of sociological dramas we we call them sociological dramas but ibsen did not like them to be called sociological dramas but uh, we do call them sociological dramas and uh, uh, it is a period uh, late 1870s and early 1880s so uh, his the pillars of society a doll's house these are the plays that he wrote while i mean ghosts so these are the plays which fall uh, under this category of sociological dramas and the last eight plays uh, beginning from the wild duck they are his the, the greatest plays that he ever wrote they these dramas are not sociological these dramas are not epic dramas they are more about the the interiors of human psyche they are more about what goes inside of a human being rather than what happens outside so these are the greatest of the plays and which bewildered even his critics and even his admirers uh, to a great degree so these are the plays the wild duck rosmer's home hedda gabler the master builder when we dead awaken so these are those plays uh, which which uh, co- uh, which form the the last part uh, the last phase of his uh, career as a dramatist and when we uh, think of ibsen we think of modern drama so ibsen is said to be the father of modern drama but when we say that ibsen is a father of modern drama then we have to relate it to the other dramas also which were being written before ibsen so ibsen's plays i mean ibsen is said to be a feminist writer after a doll's house ibsen is said to be a writer about social problems but ibsen himself did not like these labels he wanted himself to be known as a champion of human freedom not just women's freedom or men's freedom he wanted himself to be known as a champion of human freedom and he said that each individual has this responsibility towards himself to uh, he should work towards the freedom of his own self so this freedom could be uh, not just the physical freedom the mental freedom is what he talks about and his dramas are the dramas of ideas so he 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 is the one who is uh, a pioneer in this field of the drama of ideas so when we say modern drama we have to understand is as opposed to the kind of plays that were being written before it and the difference between the two so ibsen uh, i'm sorry not ibsen but when we think of modern drama we think of uh, well made plays i mean well made plays is what preceded modern drama so modern drama can be understood uh, 
very easily when we put it against well made plays it gives a contrast it it gives a reference to us now ibsen wrote plays at a time when drama was not a very popular form of writing ibsen wrote at a time when poetry and novel were the uh, the, the popular genres of writing and he chose this this craft of writing dramas and he changed it completely he changed the whole social perception he changed the perception of readers towards this art form called drama so ibsen did not follow the traditions of the well made plays he followed the traditions in the sense that his dramas were very well structured but he did not follow the kind of formula formulaic uh, subject matter the kind of formulaic plot structure and the the, the formulaic content that well made plays were serving to their audiences so as it is believed that uh, after 1770s not very good quality dramas dramas which were of a very great literary quality they were not being written so drama was an art form which catered to the popular taste during the early years of the 19th century drama was an art form which catered to the popular masses so the well made plays of eugene scribe these were the plays which you know which followed a particular uh, structure which followed a particular formula for their success so eugene scribe was uh, responsible uh, i mean he was uh, he collaborated in the writing of more than 400 dramas now he followed this type plot structure and there were these cliche cliche plot ideas subject matter that were followed so uh, the, the the climax would be pushed towards and it would be a complete uh, package as such as a drama so it would be catering to the popular taste it would have all the elements of entertainment but not very good literary value would be them would be there in those plays so this against this kind of drama ibsen started writing his own plays so his own plays ibsen's plays they owe to well made plays only so far as the structure is concerned his plays were also very well structured very tightly structured and there was no loose ends to be found in ibsen's plays but apart from this Ibsen's plays were completely different from well-made plays. So his characters were deep. Well-made plays they have superficial, shallow characters, flat characters. But Ibsen's characters are deep. They are, you know, a great uh, psychological studies. Almost all his characters, and particularly the characters that he created during the uh, later years of his life, they are great psychological studies. And he anticipated many psychological principles that were to be popularized later by Freud and Jung. so his his plays they, they they talk about human psyche his plays talk about human predicament they are tragedies but not of an epic scale epic scale in the sense that they do not talk about kings and queens they are tragedies which take place in the normal middle class drawing rooms of people normal households of people so he he talks about common people he talks about common masses and he talks about the problems that they face every day in their lives so the problems could be pertaining to society and individual the problems could be pertaining to individual uh, against other individual so it is a, a different kind of drama it is a drama which is realistic in nature more realistic than the well made plays and it focuses on the social aspects the political aspects the economic aspects of living in a middle class world so as father of modern drama ibsen was creating a drama that was more realistic a drama that was about common people a drama with which people could relate when ibsen started writing his plays in the early 1850s drama was almost a dead art so so far as literature is concerned from the literary point of view not very great plays were being written but when he died in the year 1906 he left drama as one of the most respectable art forms he created plays that stirred people from their slumber he talked about such topics he talked about such social issues which shocked people which shocked the society the contemporary society and not just the non 
Norwegian society. It shocked the European society and it shocked the whole of the world. When he wrote A Doll's House, it is said that the slamming of the door at the end of the play, the slamming of the door was heard around the world. So Ibsen created these plays which, which, which promoted social dialogue, which promoted social debate. Though he did not want to be labeled as a social reformist, he was far from being a social reformist, but he was showing a mirror to society. He was talking about those issues which were either considered taboo or which were discussed only in the debating societies or in the context of people issues. The ghost was a play which shocked many of his admirers also. So he, he shook people out of their slum and he showed a mirror to society and he created a drama which was more about people, which was more about ideas, realistic things, things which were ha actually happening all around us in society than talking about some far-fetched things. So he did not talk about kings and queens. Still, he created tragedies with which common human beings like you and me could relate to those tragedies. So, this is Henry Gibson for you. In my next video, I will be talking about A Doll's House, which is one of the most famous play of Henry Gibson. So, see you in the next video. Bye.